Hello everyone. So I've recently received a great number of requests regarding a film about favourite brushes. It is difficult for me to do a video about favourite brushes or favourite anything. There are things I'm very fond of, but when it comes to brushes, as these are the tools within my work, there are a set group of brushes which I consider to be most useful, ones that I regard highly. So today I'm going to be giving you an actual insight into my professional industrial tool set. Not everything that you're going to see is going to be sparkly and beautiful. A lot of things are quite rugged and worn because they get used over and over and over again. As I said, this is an industrial kit. This is my tool set and a great amount of work goes into being a makeup artist. I think a lot of people just think it's sort of sticking your finger in pretty eyeshadow. But in actual fact, there is a great tool set that goes into it. There's a great amount of work that is involved and it is a laborious job, it isn't a fancy job. So I shall be showing you all of the tools that I take to work with me. I do take an extensive amount of tools with me on a job just in case. On many occasions, you don't necessarily use everything, but I believe it is essential to have all of what you need just in case. So I'm going to begin by showing you the brush belt that I carry with. So I am very favorable of the MAC Cosmetics brush belt. It has lots of pouches, really, really useful. You can pack a lot into it and it's great to store brushes on the job and I also wear this around my waist or leave it just out on the counter where I'm working. One of the things that I like to do first of all when I start a makeup is of course start with clean bare skin but if I have the time, for example if you're on a shoot and you have a deadline and you have to get maybe eight models ready within an hour, I don't of course have the time for this step as preferred as it is but if I have a private client and have maybe up to an hour of course it's, it's something that I do like to use. This is the Spin for Perfect Skin and it's this fantastic tool, it's very like the Clarisonic but this one, instead of having a vibrating brush head, it has a spinning brush head, hence the name Spin for Perfect Skin. And this one is by Vanity Planet. It's battery powered, so it comes with four different heads. There's this one here, which is quite um, more abrasive than this one. This one's got finer hair, whereas this one has slightly coarser hair. So this one's great for exfoliating, but I prefer to use the finer one on clients. It also has a pumice stone head, which is great for exfoliating. Of course, a pumice stone is very, very coarse to use in the face, and I would not recommend it, but for other parts of the body, it's fantastic. And of course, the last head, which is rather large, this one's of course great for the body. And I do take all of these heads with me wherever I go because you never know what you're presented with. You might be presented with a client that maybe hasn't had time to go and wax or go to the beauty salon to have their legs done. So you, I have to do it there and then. You have to be prepared to do whatever you need to do. And I would like to specify that I'm very much about results. I like things that are done well and I like things that are finished well. That way you are providing value. I don't like things that are sloppy and I don't like things that aren't done well. As I said, I'm really about the result. So I don't really mind if the process to gaining the result is tedious, cumbersome or whatever. That is really what skills are there for. They're there to provide you with a result. Of course, you can't apply this just to dry skin as it would become quite painful due to the friction. So I actually like to apply an oil to the skin. This is the DHC cleansing oil and it's absolutely marvelous. I love these oils that you apply on and then when you add water to them or wipe them off with a damp cloth, they almost become like milk. So they're very easy to get off the skin. They're also very gentle to the skin. So they provide a great amount of lubrication for when you go in with this tool. And the way that this works is you just press the on button and then you go around the skin and the face. It's fantastic. The off button. Now I like to take it onto the decolletage. I also like to make sure the client has their hair up whilst I'm working on them so I can do the ears and run behind the ears just to make sure that there's no, no dead skin or anything that's there. This step is of course optional. Sometimes some clients do not want this at all, but it definitely does just lift any dead skin off the skin. This oil, the DHC one, is actually fantastic for facial massages. And I also like to do a massage with the moisturizer, just so that there's more lymphatic drainage and the skin becomes almost ready and it puts people in the mood, it makes them more assertive. However, relaxing at the same time. Then of course, once you're finished, you have to remove the oil. And it depends if you're near a sink or whatever. But what I like to do is just get a little bit of warm water and soak a little face towel in it and then remove it all off the client. That's the way I like to do it. I tend to buy brushes in doubles so that I have two of them or maybe more. I like to have at least two of them just so that I have a backup. I might end up using about six or seven eye brushes so I do need duplicates and replicas. The way I store my brushes is just in a little plastic case. This one's from Muji and I keep them in my archive with the rest of my kit. This is the foundation brush by Space NK. It's just called foundation. I absolutely love their brushes. I have quite a few of them that I'm very fond of. 
And this brush, I find it great because it's quite, it's not too wide and it's not too long, yet it has a certain stiffness to it. Usually they're these very phallus large things and they're quite floppy, like a cow's tongue. So they tend to be quite useless. Whereas this one's very, very firm. It's quite um, robust, I would say. And I've had them for years, so I definitely recommend these ones. Once foundation is applied, it sometimes needs a little bit more work to it. That's why a lot of people use buffing brushes or beauty blenders. So all of the brushes that I do tend to use for buffing foundation or applying foundation do tend to be synthetic. As the fibers are synthetic, they are not porous, therefore they do not absorb product in the way that natural hairs do, which are porous. For blending base, I tend to use a different variety of brush, but they all do sort of similar things. They're just different designs and sometimes some more useful than others for different jobs, of course, depending on what I'm needing and what I'm wanting to do. But when it comes to foundation, I like things to look seamless. And I think buffing brushes are great ways to not only buff around, but stipple as well. So the first brush that I would like to talk about is the Blurring Brush by Urban Decay. It's this fantastic, almost champagne gun metal color and I absolutely love this brush as it's quite robust Now I only have one of these um, but I do plan to pick up another one I know that they recently redesigned their whole brush range and they look quite different now but this brush I found it's fantastic for for buffing and for stippling it's great for those things so that's one that I would recommend the second one that I absolutely adore is by Fireless Cosmetics and it's a CB2 brush this brush is very very compact and quite tight so it's absolutely fantastic for stippling product and you can get into all the nooks and crannies of the faces with it. So I personally like it for stippling and of course blending foundation edges. It's great for that. I would definitely recommend this one and of course it's synthetic as well. Now I must mention that synthetic brushes do tend to be cruelty free as opposed to natural fibers which come from an animal. I don't have a problem with using animal hair. I'm very fond of fur. I very much like natural fiber brushes. Um, but it of course depends on your preference and of course it depends on what you're using them for and that something that is synthetic is better with a liquid based product as I stated already where something that is natural fiber is better with a powder based product. Two more brushes by Zoba. These are two different ones. One is the 102 silk finish and the smaller one is the 110 face shape brush. They both have synthetic fibers. Fantastic but they serve for different purposes. I personally like both of them. I think this one you can buff around and stipple great with it. Whereas the smaller one is great for applying concealer to the under eye and buffing it in as it gets into all the nooks and crannies of the face. And you can also apply cream contour with it. And the thing about buffing brushes is that because of their shape and the design, you can really get a seamless finish with them. Another brush that I would like to talk about for buffing. Now, the next brush I'd like to talk about is a split fiber brush and it is the MAC 123. And as you can see, it has natural fibers on one side and then on the other side it is synthetic fibers. Now a lot of people when they first saw these brushes they were a little bit puzzled as you can see the split in between the two. They were a little puzzled by this design and of course it is rather odd but it makes perfect sense when you think about it because the one half is synthetic therefore it can move product around quite easily without absorbing too much of it whereas the other half is natural fiber, so it removes a little bit of the excess. Now I find this brush fantastic for buffing in product, or if I've applied a little bit too much, it's great for just taking down the amount that you applied, whether it's even powder or if it's a liquid product. You can really reduce with it, but you can also blend with it fantastically. It's great for stippling, and that's how I would usually blend it. You can also blend in straight motions, as it does behave like a foundation brush with a buffer on the back of it. So I would definitely recommend this one. I think it's great. Another brush that I'd like to talk about is a dual fiber brush, which means that one half of the brush is natural fibers, whereas the other half is synthetic. Now this brush is fantastic for really blending. You can go right around the eye and around the crevices, especially I find around this area near the nose, you really have to work product into that area so that you don't get cracks or lines. I like this brush because this was actually one of my first ever makeup brushes. I've had it probably for about seven years and it's it's been a fantastic brush and I absolutely love it. Another brush which is very similar which I like to think of as being a sister to the 130 and this is also a MAC Cosmetics brush. Now the text has come away slightly so I will definitely caption its correct title as I'm hesitant to articulate the exact number of it and fear I may deviate from the highest degree of accuracy. But this is a fantastic brush because the fibers are a lot longer and it's a little bit more floppy. So you can apply powder highlighter with it, marvelously so. And you can also blend your base with it, but also apply cream product, especially cream blush, because you can almost press it onto the skin and then move it around 
and it really becomes very seamless very quickly and then you can build up in layers so it's fantastic for that I'm very very fond of it now for concealing I prefer more precise brushes for concealing so I'm going to talk about the brushes that I would apply concealer with first of all and what I would blend it in with now I have an absolute favorite brush for applying concealer and this is the Charles Fox 814640505 brush and it is fantastic synthetic fibers I just love the shape of it it's almost what I think a fingertip would be like if it were flat and it's absolutely fantastic for applying under eye concealer concealer anywhere and also for applying highlighter when I'm doing a face with cream contour and I'm contouring with the cream so I'm using different colors of foundation in the center of the face and in the sides I do tend to use this brush for drawing in whatever I need to because it's got quite a sharp edge to it along the top but it does curve a little bit as well so you can also use it for really cutting in under the eyebrow it's fantastic for that applying cream bases to the eyelid so it's a very very multi-purpose brush all of the brushes that I do tend to use are quite multi-purpose you can use them for many many things now the sort of brush that I use for blending in concealer and this brush is the Zova 227 soft definer and it is absolutely marvelous because when you've applied concealer to the under eyes you can actually just do it with this you can just go in and stipple and press it on or blend it out and blur it out there's so many uses you can use it on the eyes as well it's fantastic I think it's very like an index finger it definitely has a similar sort of shape to it so you can really really use it for many many things it is one that I definitely recommend to anybody as it is so versatile it has been described similarly to the MAC Cosmetics 217 another brush that is absolutely fantastic for blending concealer is the Furless CB1 brush and it is this fantastic synthetic dome like brush it's circular but it tapers at the top and there's almost a flat part at the top now this brush I have found to be very very versatile because you can really apply your concealer stipple it on or you can draw it on and then buff it out or blend it in however you prefer but I personally like it for applying concealer on the nose and apply it under the eye and you can also take it round and it's a great eye blender brush as well as well as when you've drawn a nose contour with foundation you can just really stipple it and it just softens the line ever so slightly so you still have the definition yet it looks natural so it is really a fantastic brush for that I find this brush is very sleek looking it's almost like a needle as most of the fairless brushes tend to be they all sort of taper in near the end which I'm very fond of the next brushes that I'd like to talk about are for the very very pinpoint fine concealer when you have a tiny little spot if you're doing somebody that's base and it's to be very very natural especially when you're working on in fashion and editorial the skin doesn't tend to really have any Thing. so you might have a very light layer of foundation a lot of highlighter and then tiny tiny concealing there are three brushes that I use for this and the first one that I'm going to mention is the Charles Fox 8146003 brush and it is this one right here now this is traditionally an eyeliner brush these pointy eyeliner brushes are fantastic for pinpoint concealing because you can really just apply it where you want it to it's almost like photoshopping you're just retouching and applying it just where you want to put it so it's great for that or of course go in with a blending brush like this one mentioned a moment ago this brush is also fantastic for doing liner as well as doing very very fine detail work this one however has natural fibers another brush that I absolutely love is by autograph and this is the eyeliner brush this one is synthetic and it's more pointy and it's more stiffer so you can use it for lips of course or for eyeliner but it's great for again for just pinpoint concealing with perfection so you can really perfect skin that way if you just pinpoint conceal everywhere now the last brush that I'd like to talk about which I'm very favorable of for that purpose of pinpoint concealing is the MAC 231 now this is traditionally more thought of as a lip brush but I personally love it for concealing anywhere it's also great as well when you've done a cat eyeliner and it sometimes can look a little bit uneven on either side you can take a little bit of concealer and just draw in you can just draw cut it back into being the shape you want I tend to use it for that a lot it's a very multi-purpose brush you can apply eyeshadow with it you can apply highlight to the inner corner you can correct eyebrows with it with concealer but it is great for pinpoint concealing as well as applying to the lips and cutting round the lips with concealer just to neaten things up it is fantastic for that so moving on to blusher and contour and highlighter I think the two sort of merge together the finishing products do tend to merge so when it comes to blusher brushes and contour brushes I tend to use brushes that are similar I don't like to apply anything with a very harsh brush 
or a brush that's very, very precise. I don't like doing these things precisely because I always think it makes the skin look stripy when things are done very, very precisely. I like things to build up slowly and gradually so that you still ensure that skin looks seamless and expensive. Now this brush is Zizova 126 Luxe Cheek Finish. Of course it is marketed as a cheek brush, but it is very, very versatile. This is what it looks like from this side and then from that side. You can see it's it's thinner on one side and fatter on the other. You can really build up contour with it. You can apply blusher with it, powder, a lot of things. It's very versatile. What I love this brush for is building up contour, almost swishing it up from the side. To sometimes to warm up skin as well, it's fantastic to take bronzer on it across the hairline and round the perimeter of the face. Now, another brush which is very, very famous for blusher, it's the MAC 116. I think this brush is fantastic. I love the design. Again, it's fat from the side and tapered at the top, and then on the other side, it's very, very thin. So you can really apply blush quite specifically with it, as well as contour. And I like to apply contour almost in an upward swishing motion, rather than a downward stripy motion. You can do so many things with it. I actually quite like it for applying highlighter just to the cheek. I think commonly nowadays you see a lot of people using very specific brushes for highlighting or fan brushes. I don't think they give the same effect. I don't think they give a gradual built up layered effect whereas fatter brushes like this tend to. So it is definitely a fantastic one. Now a similar brush to that is the NARS number six. It could be a number nine. I never know which way is the correct one, but it's either the number nine or the number six. I will definitely confirm that and leave it within the description of this film. But this is their older design. I know that they completely redesigned their range of brushes, but I actually quite prefer the older design as the newer one is all black. But this brush is absolutely fantastic for powdering. I absolutely love it to powder, love it for contouring. I do prefer something a little bit more firm for contouring, but it's great if I had nothing else. And I love it for applying highlighter and powder and blusher. It's a fantastic multi-purposer. Now for contour, I tend to prefer brushes that are rounded and shorter. Now I've been very fond of this brush for some time and it is the Charles Fox 8146083 brush and it is a fantastic design and it's quite it's stumped, fat on one side and still quite fat on the other but slightly pinched. This brush is fantastic for contouring and really blending, you can really sculpt with it, it's fantastic. You can also take it through the eye and sculpt outward and sculpt the forehead. So it's a great multitasker. Of course, a very famous brush is the MAC 109. This brush is fantastic for applying contour and bronzer. I absolutely love it because you can be quite precise with it yet blend at the same time and take it on its side as well for cutting a much more specific contour. So it's fantastic. Now for powder and highlighter, I do tend to categorize them together. So this is the Stelazzi powder brush. I absolutely love this brush. It's fat from one side and then from the other side, it is thinner and it's been tapered beautifully. But this brush is made from what I believe will be either blue or gray squirrel or maybe a cat as it's unbelievably soft. It's very, very soft, really beautifully so as it may seem huge, but when you actually apply it, to the skin, you can really get it into small areas and apply powder to just the areas you want to apply it to. So it's fantastic for that. Now this brush is the MAC 138, very, very renowned, very famous. Now I like this brush because you can really apply powder quite precisely to the face where you want to apply it. You can also apply highlighter. You could also even apply blusher with it. It's great, multitasker. A useful trick is sometimes when you've applied too much powder, by going in with a clean brush, you can really take off some of the excess and almost torn down the amount of powder you have because the fibers will lift some of the powder off the face. So this is what I love that brush for. I love it as well for applying shimmer to the body, especially the decolletage area and the shoulders. You can really buff it up on the shoulders. This brush is by Wayne Goss. I believe it is the number two and it is fantastic for applying powder really close to the under eye. You can apply highlighter with it, blush, Contour, it is a marvelous multitasker. The next brush I'd like to talk about is this Charles Fox angled brush and it is the 8146033. And it is fantastic for applying powder right under the eye. You can see it just fits in there perfectly. And you can apply highlighter with it. It's very, very much a multitasker brush again. Great across the lids as well and down the center of the face. So this brush I'm very, very favorable of. I have many of them, but I personally, I love it for applying powder just where I need to apply it. I don't like to apply powder everywhere across the face because I think it can really, it's unnecessary. It can really dry it out. Unless of course you are applying a full base of foundation that requires powder, then that is the only time that I would use a lot of powder. Now this brush is one of my absolute favorites for highlighting and it is a crown brush and it's unbranded. I don't think they have the 
brushed to buy individually. It was part of a set that I bought years ago, and it's the only one that survived from that set, thank goodness. Highlighter across the cheek is great for that, and powder, you can really get quite close to the eye. Zova, I know, do a very similar brush to this in natural fibre and in synthetic fibres as well. However, it is a lot denser than this one. This one is quite thin and it's slightly flopped. Now for eyes, if I'm working with a product like a cream or a gel or a liquid and putting it on the lid, first of all, I do tend to like to work with the Charles Fox 8146405 brush, which I showed you earlier for concealer, as it's great for that. But for applying powder eyeshadow, even cream eyeshadows, the MAC 239 is marvellous because you can really just press on or lightly brush over. It's fantastic for that. It's great on the brow bone as well. So those are the ones I like to pack eyeshadow on if I'm applying heavy eyeshadow in that fashion. Now, I absolutely love the MAC 217. I think most makeup artists will say the same thing. It's one of the most legendary brushes there are. And it's fantastic for applying eyeshadow just to the lid, blending it through, cutting in with a crease, you can do so many things with it, apply it to the underneath. You can even do concealer, powder. It's just a marvellous multitasker. I'm very, very fond of it. Now, I wanted to mention this brush, and it is the Graduate Dilla and Rowney brush, and it's just the Oval Wash. I define this brush as being a giant version of the MAC 217, so you can really blend with it quite largely. You can even apply eyeshadow with it, but I tend to use it just for softening everything through. The next one I'd like to talk about is the Zova 228 brush, and I would use this for the crease mainly, and for blending across the eye. You can also apply highlight to the inner corner. One trick that I like to do with this brush is, once I've done a whole makeup and maybe think, hmm, it needs a little bit more color, just on the center of the lid, I sort of buff it across, just adding the almost a spotlight to the eyes, so it's fantastic for that. Now the next brush that I'd like to talk about is the Zoba 231 Luxe Petite Crease Brush, and it is absolutely fantastic for applying colour through the crease. You can also apply colour across the lid, I actually do that a lot. I use this brush just to pat colour across the lid, especially with metallic eyeshadows. They do require quite a bit of packing and patting to get them on, and to get them on opaque looking. This brush is great for under the eye as well. You can apply colour to the inner corner, to the outer corner, to smoke it through the crease. You can build up a crease and define more with it. You can even apply highlighter under the eyebrow. It's also great for the lips, believe it or not. I use this brush sometimes when I want to apply a stain to the lips. If you have, if you want to do dark lips, you can just really start to build it up quite slowly, but still be precise with it. When it comes to pencil brushes, I do have two favourites, and the first one is the Inglot 80HPS brush, and you can really apply colour quite specifically to the underneath. You can also smudge with it if you've applied cold pencil. It's great with creams as well as powders. You can also smoke the top lash line and go through the crease with it. The next one I like to talk about is a similar design, but slightly smaller. And that is the Charles Fox 8146031 brush. And it is fantastic for applying either sparkle or highlighter to the inner corner. You can also apply colour to the cupid bow with it. But for applying underneath the eye, you can really apply colour fantastically with it and smoke out the lash line. And if you wanted, you could go into the crease with it. So I thoroughly recommend this brush it's, as it's fantastic and very, very small. I think under eye brushes, pencil brushes and smudger brushes should be quite small because you are doing very, very precise work with them. Now for applying gel eyeliner or doing sharp graphic liner, I don't actually like the traditional way of applying eyeliner, which would be done with a brush like this. Of course, this one is slightly bent, which is part of the design, but most of the time they're straight and pointed. I've never found myself reaching for those brushes. When it comes to eyeliner, I do not tend to use those very exact, almost needle-like brushes. I tend to go for angled brushes more, and I find that I can draw a line quite sharp with one of them and in the inner corners and on the waterline. And this one is the Space NK liner brush. I'm very fond of the Space NK brushes range. I think they're fantastic. The main reason that I'm so fond of this brush is because it is incredibly fine and thin, yet robust. So it maintains its shape, yet it applies almost like a knife. It's very, very sharp. So you get a very, very exact application with it, and I would definitely recommend it. I also like this very fat pointed Laura Mercier Smoky Eyeliner Brush. As you can see, it's very, very fat at the base, yet it tapers into a very sharp point. This is great for applying color to the waterline 
as well as the upper waterline. You can also do lino with, not necessarily as precise as you would with an angled brush or a liner brush, but you can with this brush. Now I tend to use this brush mainly for smudging color underneath. If you've applied gel liner or eyeliner or pencil, you can smudge it in. I'm also very fond of the Zova 312 Detail Liner Brush, and I would compare this very similar to the Space NK Liner Brush, but much smaller. So it's fantastic for doing an inner corner or a, a cat eye in the inner corner. You can really draw a very sharp, precise point with it. You can also draw in individual hairs to the eyebrows with it. It is a fantastic multitasker, and it gives you a very, very precise line. I also don't tend to use lash combs as much. This is also an unbranded one. I tend to find that lash combs fall apart all the time. I've spent so much money on very expensive ones, cheaper ones, they always tend to fall apart on me. So for lashes, I tend to apply mascara with a spoolie, like this, or I use this MAC brush, which is tiny little white fibers. When mascara application is done with this brush, it's very exact and often leaves a very beautiful effect as the brush is designed to be very precise and to be used precisely. Now for lips, I tend to use roughly only around three to four types of brushes. This is the Artmaster Oil Flat Series 81 number eight brush and it has a square tip to the end. It's shaped quite sharp like a square. And it's fantastic for just getting round those edges, especially the cubist bow, and you can really whack the product into the lip with it. The second lip brush that I'm also favorable of is the MAC 231, as mentioned earlier, with concealer. I use it both for pinpoint concealing as well as applying lipstick. You can really precisely curve the lip and work product into the lip with that. It's fantastic for that. Now, when it comes to the eyelashes, I also like to curl the eyelashes. These are my trusted QVS eyelash curlers. I've used them in many tutorials before. I sanitize them constantly and take them on jobs constantly and use them myself. Tweezers are also very important. These ones are by Ruby and Millie. I believe that they've been discontinued. I've had these for years and they're fantastic because they're quite solid. Their pressing plates together are very, very well aligned. So you can really pluck hair quite efficiently with them. And you can also apply eyelashes with them fantastically as well. And of course, add motifs depending what you're doing. Now, when it comes to eyelashes, I tend to use the classic old duo adhesive glue, but I always make sure I carry a latex free glue. This one is by Illamasqua. These are ones I just bought in Boots the Chemist. Scissors are very, very useful, especially when you have false lashes, as most false lashes tend to be too big for the eye. And what I mean by that is not in terms of their length, but in terms of the width on the eye. And I'll give you an example. Now I've picked out a set of Eyelure eyelashes. These are the 310 eyelashes, very, very full on. But when I take this out and place it onto the eyelid, you can see that it is the band is too long for my actual eye. So what you do is you take an estimated measurement of how much you can actually put on the eye and you chop where you want it. So you actually lose a bit of the eyelash and then you glue that on, but then the remainder you can also glue on at the edge so that there is no wastage and it also adds a much more elongating feline winging effect. I also like to take a clean powder puff with me on every job. This one is by Elamasca, it's still in its wrapping, but I don't actually use it for applying the powder. I tend to put it just on my hand like that, almost like a large ring. That way that when you're working on the face, you don't actually disturb any of the foundation that you've applied anywhere. So it's very, very useful for that. This one is of course a dirty one that's in due need of a wash, but I thought I would show it as this one's still in its packet. Now, some people call them Q-tips. I call them cotton buds. And I tend to keep them in this fantastic box by Muji. It's this sort of smoky plastic box. And I keep them inside that as I tend to find that the boxes that cotton buds come in don't have a sealer and they don't tend to be the most aesthetically pleasing of cartridges either. The same applies for spoolies. I keep them in, an, in a Muji box, the exact same one. And I always make sure I have an abundance of everything. The same applies for cotton pads. These ones are super drugs own. I also make sure I carry some roll with me at all times as I don't like paper towels. I much prefer roll or some people call it kitchen roll, but it's the, it's fantastic for very, it's very absorbent and you never know what you'll need it for or who might need it or whatever. I also carry a metal spatula. This one is by Supercover. It's fantastic. So you can gouge out product for whatever you need it for. And sometimes you have to make a custom blend. Instead of doing it on the back of my hand, I tend to use this silver palette. You can see my one is very worn. I've had this one for years and years. And this one is by Supercover. I also make sure I carry some wooden spatulas just in case you're working with false blood or anything like that. 
They're very useful as well, and as well if you run out of spoons, you always have these as an option. Fantastic. I always make sure I have some wet wipes for the hands. These ones are by Wet Ones, and I always have makeup removal wipes. These ones are by Garnier. They're fantastic. I'm not really fussed about which brand of makeup wipe I'm using as long as I have them in my kit. I also make sure I carry toothpicks. These are the Oral-B Glide toothpicks, and these are the ones that are designed more like this, so you can floss with them, but they also have an end for picking out anything that's in between the teeth. This is a very essential step. I'd recommend it to anybody to always have some sort of floss with you. I don't like the stringy floss. I much prefer these ones because they're a lot more easier to use and much more practical. You don't have to navigate between the teeth. Now this might seem awfully strange, but I always make sure that I carry a bag of disposable razors. These ones are absolutely fantastic. They are by Wilkinson and they come with a little plastic lid. You take that off. Sometimes you need to shave the models or the client or whatever. With men, sometimes you have to taper down some of the hair. Men are, tend to be a lot more hairy than females, but with females, they might not have had the time to have removed excess hair. Most of the time, it's all gone, but just in case there's anything, I always make sure I have razors. And as well for sideburns. Now, men are much more susceptible to getting rid of their sideburns because, of course, men have a growth on their face, they have beards. Whereas women can sometimes get sideburns that come down quite far and they almost become like a hazy felt. So I usually recommend that that is um, removed. Hand sanitizer, of course. I do prefer to use soap and water, but if I don't have access to soap and water, I will simply use a hand sanitizer as it's essential to have clean, sterilized hands. This one is by Marks & Spencer. So I always make sure that brush cleaner is packed in my kit, and this is the MAC Cosmetics brush cleaner. As you can see, this one is used and a little scruffy. This is, again, my working kit. This brush cleaner is fantastic for there and then, and of course, when I get home, I give my brushes a thorough, deep clean. I always make sure that I have Beauty So Clean with me. It's essential that all your products and all your makeup and all your brushes and everything you're using, all your products, all your equipment is sanitary at all times. I always make sure that I take these clips as well. They're more of something you would see in an office. You can get them in almost all office supply stores. And these are fantastic. Most stylists tend to carry quite a lot of these. But if there is no stylist or perhaps they might have forgotten or if you don't have anything. These are fantastic because sometimes you need to attach things to somebody or to the clothes or pinch at the waist so it brings the fabric in and these are fantastic just to go on the back to pull it all together. So very, very useful and I would say always carry at least four of these. They're fantastic and they're very useful. I always make sure that I have section clips as well. You can buy these in almost all places, Sally's, Superdrug, Boots or wherever, the internet as well. They're very useful for just pinning hair up and out of the face so that you don't get makeup on the hair. And as well, you can tie the hair back and up so that it's out of the way. And especially for oiling or applying shimmer or foundation to the decolletage on the body, it's great for just getting the hair out of the way whilst you do that. I also don't like to put my products, my equipment, my brushes, anything of mine down on anyone else's surface. One, because I think it's unhygienic. And secondly, I think it would be rather uncouth. So I always make sure that I carry a large bath towel or piece of fabric that is respectable looking just to place down on the surface the way I'm going to arrange my kit if there is a surface. And I just use this gray bath towel and I purchased this in John Lewis. And lastly, I always take a really big fat mirror with me. This one is by Boots, the chemist. And the reason that I carry quite a large mirror is that sometimes there isn't mirrors and sometimes when the client or the model or whoever you're applying makeup to, when you provide them with a small compact like this, you can't really see everything that's in there. You really have to navigate around to have a look so you don't get to see the full makeup. So this one is fantastic because I can see my whole face in that and it's very, very large. So it's very, very useful and I definitely recommend to any makeup artist to always have a substitute mirror with you just in case. So that more or less completes this film. I very much enjoyed giving you an insight. I thought it would be more appropriate for me to list my bare essential, most useful tools. And that is what I have done today. This has been quite a long film. So for those of you who are very fond of my voice, I'm sure you will be very glad about that. I really very much enjoyed making this film, talking about the things that I work with and the things that I deal with. So if you have any questions for me, or films you would like me to make, or things you'd like me to speak about, do feel free to list them below as I'm listening. I'm very eager to hear what you would like to see and what you'd like to hear. But I must thank you once again for watching. And of course, take care of yourself. Bye.